I started with with modding. I guess as a as a child, I was very interested about how games work in general. I don't remember the year, but it was the 90s still. It was Warcraft 2 and the map editor for it. So I started basically as a child. The first games I was allowed to play were strategy games. So as an example, I started making my own maps for Age of Empires 2. Then I started making my own maps for Warcraft 3. And I think a lot of modders started in the Warcraft uh, editor. Modding in Warcraft gave us Dota and from, from Dota League of Legends. So it became a huge thing. My adventure with modding started when I was uh, doing in my first year of university in Poznan. I was trying to do anything not to study, so modding proved to be a great thing because you can spend countless hours doing it. I remember it was uh, summer in uh, November 2016. I went to this Falcon uh, Fantasy Festival with my friend and uh, Waja Augustynek and Tomasz Marchewka were uh, uh, telling stories about uh, cre creating uh, Witcher blood and wine and I uh, decided that it's really cool. I found out that there is this uh, free modding tool called the Red Kit and I started doing uh, my own mods. When I was a small child, I remember playing the series called Przygody Rexia. I managed to edit level files, managed to modify them to make the game easier. I started creating my first custom maps for games like Trackmania Sunrise at age around six, seven years old. Yeah, I really liked racing games and I like created maps for them. The Farewell of the White Wolf is the Witcher 2 adventure made in the old mod kit. It explores the wedding and the following days of uh, Yennefer of Venkerberg and Geralt of Rivia. And it was created as an answer to a need of a happy ending for The Witcher 3. Chronicles of Mirtana, which is a Gothic to Total Conversion mod, and I was a game director there. It's a mod where we tell a story about the canon of the Gothic stories, of the Gothic lore, and many projects like this just die along the way because people don't have any more time, they don't have any more power to do this, and I'm really proud that our team managed to pull it to the very end. My peak uh, would be Neverwinter Nights 2, and I started doing a lot of different stuff uh, in that engine. I think one of the coolest things I was able to do was a whole auction house uh, where you could buy, sell items in the game, things like that. The biggest step uh, that I took in just making my own mods close to what I do now is basically with Bethesda games. Uh, so I did as a 12-year-old mods for Morrowind uh, that, of course, I never released, and it's good that I never released them. I made mods for Oblivion, I made mods for Skyrim, and then eventually I found the mod kit for The Witcher 2. When the Red Kit released, there was a big competition for the best mod, uh, and I happened to win that competition, and the prize was Arondite, uh, Geralt's special silver sword, which is also one reason why, when I was later a quest designer at CD Projekt uh, in Blood and Wine, I made sure to add a quest where you can get Arondite back. I was creating like many smaller mods because before I created my magnum opus, which is it's called uh, The Witcher Revision. And it started after I downloaded uh, Red Kit and obviously uh, already my initial plans were to create something uh, big. I wanted to see how it uh, how Witcher 1 uh, map, uh, especially my favorite part, which is the outskirts, would look like on more present day engine and I was searching for the forums and uh, googling and so on and I couldn't find uh, anyone that would uh, try to recreate this so I decided that's okay I will do it myself. The skills that you learn uh, as a modder, especially if you're doing like narrative mods, especially if you're working with people already, and now it's much easier than it used to be back then, it's basically almost a one-to-one -one transition into a quest designer's role. We put together a thing, the, the, the most basic thing that the players experience, and modding is uh, definitely something that helped me with that. When you have modding experience, you are not afraid of diving into new tools, new areas. Having my modding experience, doing a lot of those things myself, even if not professionally, it still allowed me, when I was later a quest designer, to just speak with my colleagues in a different way. 
So I'll give you an example. There is a train in one of the Nomad quests, and you know, back then we didn't have any trains in Cyberpunk as a feature, right? So actually, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but actually it's like three cars, one after the other, and I just spent a lot of time synchronizing their movement and making it so that it feels natural and that they move all on the actual rail. And then, you know, it, it, we have a train in Cyberpunk now, or, or a metro. But the metro has also been done by a former modder. <laughs> so that tells you something. It's a very powerful engine, especially when we're talking about making new stories. We're giving them whole tool set that we had at, at our disposal when creating Witcher 3. I expect people to create stories they want, always wanted to tell, like I did. Even when I play other games, I always see the edges of the map, when there's a very interesting landscape with not a lot going on, but it's very moody and atmospheric. And my mind always immediately just starts to like, you could put something there and something there and something there. And I do know that in The Witcher 3, we have still a lot of places like this. I don't even know what people can do. And for me, that's actually the exciting part. My hope is to see more uh, narrative content. There is a huge palette of stuff, of, of characters, of monsters, of places. You will be able to create your own expansion if you have time and uh, resources. Only imagination is your limitation with that. I'm excited. I'm excited to see uh, how it will work out. It will be a great starting point to create something on their own, to create a journey for other people to share the love of the game and the world. And like I especially came to the company because of RedKit and making a red kit for The Witcher 3 always was like the dream. Like we should do it. And now we get to do it and it makes me super happy.